All right, what's going on, everybody? Now I understand that you guys are probably not uh, comfortable with the uh, new way of making this these classes here that we're going to be making them, and I don't blame you because this seems like they take ten times longer, and you may have ran into a problem earlier on. So what I did, I want to show you the problem that you you probably already ran into if you tried making the character class. So right now, what I'm going to show you, I already made a character class. <clears throat> and I made it the hillbilly way. And let's just look at it first. We have a character class that has three private members. One of them happens to be a weapon, which is already one of our custom classes that we've already made. That we've already made. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, we got the... <coughs> This, the two standard functions that just returns the value of the private variables or the double types. We don't do anything with the weapon, but um, <clears throat> I don't. I'm not too worried about the structure of this class here. I want to show you some issues that are going to be coming up. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to uh, make a weapon or make a character here real quick. Character X. Let's watch it run. And it runs. And that's all I wanted to show you. I'm not going to show you all the functions that, that go along with it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to delete this right now. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this class and make the new way. Make it the way we just learned. And I'm going to show you some of the issues that will come up. Which you may have already encountered. <clears throat> and it's going to be duplicating errors here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make a header file. New item. Header. I'm going to call it character. And this is the uh, fast way that we learned in the last video. So here's my H file. And I'm going to put in just the definition. Oops, wrong one. I'm just going to put in the prototypes of the function here, the class. Just like we did the last time. You can watch the video in the previous video for a more descriptive detail because I did this, I covered this. Uh, very slowly and in detail on the last video, but I'm doing the same exact thing. Add a character CPP file. So I'm doing the same exact thing I am with the weapon class. Character. Alright, and I'm going to paste the uh, implementations here. So we got our declaration and implementation of the character. I'm going to save it. And now, let's go back to our main file. Let, what if I include, which is probably what you may have done, a character class, which makes sense. And we want to make a character variable. Character me. Okay, let's run it. <coughs> we get there were build errors. And the uh, issue is, is the redefinition here. We're redeclaring a class of weapon here. So now, uh, if you go back to the header file video that I made, the title of the video is a uh, header files. I explain very clearly what the directives do. So if we look at our include directory here, we include the weapon H here. That's what we use. We include this here. Well, if we now let's look at our main here. We include the character H. Well, if we look right here. We are including the weapon twice. In this case, we're including it here and inside here at the very top. We essentially include this weapon type twice. <clears throat> now in the header file video, I said what this include directory does. It basically takes the entire contents of this file here and replaces it here. And that's exactly what it does. It, it's typing it in twice. See, I'm going to I'm going to replace this include character.h with the entire code here, and that's what it does. And that's the issue. And some of you might have figured out, hey, maybe I should just include just the uh, character, and it would run fine. But that's going to be a hassle to figure out what classes are embedded in which, which classes are including or needs inheritance, which classes are the parent and child of which. That's going to be a hassle to deal with. So how do we solve this problem? Well, now we're going to be learning um, just a couple things 
on directives. So this is the problem that we're going to be running into. Redeclaration here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to briefly explain to you a new directive. And it's going to be define. So this is brand new. And everything that begins with this pound sign here is going to be called a preprocessor directive. Now, uh, preprocessor directives are things that that are being dealt with before any of your code is def uh, compiled. What this define uh, character is going to do, let's say I see out pi. I want to set it up here. And um, and we output, we store this as a value here. So what's, this is not a variable. And there were uh, some kind of errors here. That's because I got this thing going on. Let me get rid of this character thing. We don't need it yet. This is going to print out the text of this code. So what happens is, before your program is to, uh, compiled, it's going to run through each one of these pre-processing directives here. It's going to come across this define keyword. Well, it's a directive. And it's going to say, okay, for every time I see a pi, the letter pi, replace it with the, te the text that's in here. And I could put in anything I want here, such as um, fire. <clears throat> now, well, we don't see, we don't actually see this, but what's going on here is um, before this code is compiled, it's going to actually change our code. This is going to actually before that this gets compiled, it's going to actually remove everything that sees the word pi, and it's going to actually type in fire for us, and we won't see that happen. But that's what's going on when we define things, and there's going to be a little bit more to the define in the next video because I don't have time to, ex to really get in depth with the define here so the problem that I talked about earlier about this redeclaration it's going to take a couple videos maybe a video or two to explain how we're going to solve that problem but we need to go over a couple um, pre-processing directives and I'm not going to go too much in depth with these but I'm going to show you enough to, uh, to get by so you can understand them so this, this is the um, brief intro to the new directive. And there will be more explained in the next video. So just to wrap it up, I'm going to type in pi here. And this actually replaces the code with the word fire. It actually puts in the text. So if I do this, if I remove this quote here, and then I run it, this is the same thing as taking this and typing it here. Fire. Well, that's a syntax error because I need a second quote here. Now, if I did this, if I did this, we won't have a problem. Actually, uh, let me try something else. Let's try this. Because I think this quote is ignoring that uh, semicolon over here, wouldn't it? Just shouldn't. So let's try it like this. Dang it, it's still gonna ignore that semicolon. All right. Well, shoot. If we can come up with a way to not get that semicolon read, it would work. Actually, I got an idea. I just want to prove it. All right. Never mind. Anyway, I think you guys got the idea. It's actually going to take all the characters here. And this compiler doesn't like this because this thinks it's the beginning, which it is, the beginning of a quote. So, we won't do that. But it actually replaces this with all of 
the texts here to here. Oh, I got an idea. Here, let's try this. Let's try this. And we'll try it like this. There we go. Check that out. See, it actually takes this with the semicolon on it. So let's try this. No, uh, no, we can't do that because that'll go away. I got an idea. Let's try this. And let's get rid of this. And let's put a quote here. All right. That's enough clowning around, so you guys got the idea, I hope. So I will see you in the next video, and I will explain more in detail on this pie thing, or on this define thing. All right, so I'll see you in the next tutorial.